new life, glory be to God. We thank you for the breath of life, huh? The breath of life in the name of Jesus. When you spoke, hallelujah, you told Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones, glory be to God. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for breathing in this ministry, breathing in this building, God. Breathing all over us in the name of Jesus as we come to you, God. As we lift up those hands before you, God. As we surrender all unto you, God, we thank you for having your way in the service. We thank you right now that pillars of your goodness and pillars of your greatness and pillars of you in the name of Jesus. We will feel you today. We want to feel you moving. 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 We want to feel you moving today. We want you to touch somebody like never before. Glory be to God. And I give you praise right now for our pastor. I give you praise for Stafford Moore Jr. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise for our apostle and every member and minister in this place, Lord be to God. We thank you right now for having your way in the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Put your hands together in this house. Amen. It's always a blessing to be amongst believers. Can you hear me? I know I, I turned it up a little late. But how y'all doing on the, this morning? Amen. Amen. Y'all look beautiful. Look at neighbor and say, neighbor. I'm so glad to see you on today. Amen. It's a blessing. Every time we're going to have our very own Deacon Stokes, he's going to open us up with a scripture. Amen. So just join in with him. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes out of the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verses 27 to 30. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verses 1, 27 to 30. And you there just say amen. This morning during Sunday school, we had talked about a conflict, a conflict that involved the Gentiles, and the conflict was whether or not they would be allowed to be part of God's people. And under the old law of Moses, you had to be circumcised. And Paul and Barnabas went around teaching the true gospel under a new covenant that says basically that if you want to be part of God's fold, you don't have to be circumcised. So they had a council who decided, much like a mediator when you have a conflict, they had a council called the Jerusalem Council. And Paul and Barnabas and the others met privately to discuss this. And the bottom line was this, if you want to be a believer, all you have to do is believe and have the faith. And the Holy Spirit came upon those Gentiles, which basically was icing on the cake. And they were part of God's flock. So this scripture kind of talks a little about that. There should not be a conflict if you want to be part of God's people. Philippians chapter 1, verses 27, it reads, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified of your adversary, which is to them a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here is in me. I just read to you from the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verses 27 and 30. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word.
come down. Praise the Lord, everybody. Turn me down some. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, 
This is the word. Now, y'all be doing me like this all the time. We're going to try this one more time. This is the word. Let it revelate. Let it open the minds of those who read upon its pages. Lord, once again, we stand before your people prepared to go into your word. So, God, at this time, we ask you to remove all flesh out of your sight. God, allow this word to impact our hearts and our mind in a unique way on this morning. God, I believe that what is needed on this morning has already been co-signed by the praise and worship. 
even by the opening prayer, God, that you are all in our business. God, you are in control of our lives and that we can trust what you're doing. So, God, at this time, we ask you to bring all our minds and hearts in. Let this word penetrate the very depths of our soul. God, that we may produce Christ's likeness in our life. And we ask this in your son Jesus' name. Everyone here say amen. 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 I'm excited about this word. I'm excited because God has a way of setting you up, uh, Pastor Matt, and making your work easy. Mike, you made my job easy on today. Amen. I thank you for your gift. Amen. We had a conversation this week. And today, let me know that he, he listened to me, and I thank him for it. Amen. Amen. Y'all put your hands together for him. Amen. You play a vital role here. You play a vital role that is very much needed. Amen. So let's read. And it says, but you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend. I took you from the ends of the earth. From his father's corners, I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am, I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my right righteous right hand amen put your hands together for that reading amen I, I want to talk about something today and the title of this message is trust the process look at never say trust the process hey say it again say it like you really mean it trust the process amen and the subtitle is encouragement for the servant. Amen. God took me this way, and I was like, God, why am I going here? I was listening, and here it is, Robert. I was listening to your grandmother. <laughs> um, a few days ago, I was listening to your grandmother, and she was praying. I don't even know why she popped up on my YouTube, and she praying, and she praying, and she praying, and I was just, I was in a low space, in a no spot. And I didn't know how to feel. It was some stuff that was happening all around me and my family, some stuff we trying to take care of. And, you know, when you're trying to do things, Spark, sometimes it causes tension. Amen. When you're trying to correct some things and put some things in order and figure some things out, and it can cause tension. Amen. When you're trying to uh, move forward. But I, was, I went on YouTube, and I was laying back, and I was about to pray, and your grandmother came on, and she was praying, and she said, trust the process. And it stood out to me, and the Lord led me to this text. Amen. Trust the process. Look at your name and say, trust him. Trust. Amen. So what is going on at this time? Israel is in a state of commotion. They are being uh, uh, exiled out of their lands. And Isaiah well, they're about to be judged. Put it like that. They're about to be judged. And Isaiah is writing about what is coming and then trying to give encouragement on the back end. So for the first 39 scriptures or, or, ver or, or chapters, Isaiah is warning of the coming judgment. Right? And then in chapter 40, it shifts. And it begins to encourage those who were under judgment. But 41 starts off unique for the first seven verses. It talks about all those who put their strength and trust in themselves. It talks about those nations. Some texts say islands, but all those nations that don't trust the Lord, that haven't put their uh, uh, trust in him, um, they're going to find themselves in the place in front of God. He said, come and ask me. Come and see, but at the end of the day, what you're doing is going to fail because you have not placed your trust in me. But then he turns to his very own, and he says, put it back up there, Micah, verse 8. But you, Israel, my servant, 
Look at them and say, we are servants. Hey, Amen. I want y'all to focus on that right there. Matt, we are servants. Whom I have what? Jojo, you didn't choose yourself. Matt, you didn't choose this. Hey, Amen. Kim, you did not choose this. Kalisha, you didn't choose it. He said, Whom, who, who, who chose him? Who chose him? God. He said, Whom I have what? Chosen. You descendants of Abraham, what? My what? Friend. So, Let's park right there and understand something. You didn't call him, he called you. You did not choose him, he chose you. You didn't make up the plan, he made the plan. Sometimes it's hard being a servant. Now, when you look at the word servant in Hebrew, it means slave. <laughs> look at there and say, it's hard being a slave. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the real reason it is, it's hard being an agent that God uses to administer his plan. And this is where I want to kind of play in trusting that process. Because being servants of God and being chosen by God, you didn't choose it. You didn't prepare yourself for it. So there's going to be some ebbs and flows, some ups, some downs, some highs and some lows that you're going to go through in life that you're going to have to trust God. You're going to have to what? Trust the process. Now look at verse 9, and this is where it gets interesting. And I'm going slow because I'm getting somewhere. Go to verse 9, Micah. It said, I took you from the ends of the earth, from his father's corners, I called you. I said, you are my what? I have chosen you and not have not what? Now, you got to understand prophetic talk. Because this ain't talking about Israel. It includes Israel. But Israel wasn't at the farthest corners of the world yet. See, 40, 41, and 42 is also talking about us. So he told them, I have called you. And I'm going to break down something to you here in a second. But he said, also, I have took you from the far ends of the earth, from the farthest corners. I called you, Matt. I called you, Anthony. I called you, Kalisha. I called you, Stokes. I called you, Sparks. I said, you are my servant. Who? Ain't it a thing when God chooses you? And sometimes, a lot of times, he chooses you for something that you really can't do in and of yourself. Amen. I have chosen you, and guess what? Just to make you understand that I know you're not qualified, I have not rejected you. So, the title of this message is, Trust the Process. So let's, let's, let me uh, slow down just a minute. It's interesting to me that God chose Israel to be what he called the light to all nations. Amen. When you go over there and you read in verse 49 and 6 of Isaiah, at the end of that part B of that verse, it says, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, all the nations, that's what he's saying, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. That my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The reason we are here, the reason we lift our hands, the reason we worship is because God chose Abraham. And through Abraham, we got Isaac, we got Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And through Israel, he, they became a nation. And through that nation, Christ came. And he reached to the ends of the world. But here's the funny thing about it. The same God who called Israel also knew that they were conniving, broken, unfaithful people. Fragile, weak with problems. Look at them and say, I got some issues. <laughs> my mom used to say that. She would say, I got some issues. I'm working on my issues. He picked people.
people with issues, people with problems, people with shortcomings to be the light to all other people. So he's letting you know that you're no better than the ones that you called to reach. So why would God do that? Why would God, Sparks, choose a people that he know can't be what he wants them to be on their own? For they depend on him. Some things we go in, through in life, God wants us to turn to him. Matt, some things we go through in life pulls us and gravitates us back to him, keeps us in a certain mindset, in a certain posture, in a certain position. The very same God that knew that they were broken people also said, I did not reject you. <laughs> y'all should put y'all hands together on that. Yeah. Amen. So, here's the crazy thing. When Isaiah wrote this, they didn't read it all at that time. They would be reading it later. And the, they would be years into this exile. And they got to read in verse 40 and 41 to be encouraged. Now, here's the thing. How are you going to be encouraged when God has ripped you from your homeland? God allowed the Persians, I mean the Assyrians and the uh, Babylonians to come in and take you out, snatch you up, separate you from home, separate you from family, put you in bondage, and then you are told to be of good courage, to be of good cheer. Y'all know in Jeremiah, I think 29 and 11, it says, I know the plan. Y'all know we love quoting that scripture, right? Y'all know that before that script was wrote, he said, you're going to go into exile. Clarice, before he says, I know my, the plans I have for you, plans to what? Prosper and what? Finish it for me. Put it up there, Mike. I got it just in case y'all could. Now, I just wanted to see if y'all know. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to what? Plans to give you what? Wait a minute. You just ripped me from my land. You, you just caused me to lose my job. You just, <laughs> I lost a loved one that I wasn't expecting to lose. I'm dealing with a sickness I wasn't expecting to deal with, for I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord, plans to what? Prosper you and what? So something... What is going on here? Because that don't sound like what you're doing to me, Lord. It doesn't sound like what you allow me to experience. One thing the Lord told me to say this morning is, God ain't always concerned about your feelings. Kalisha, God ain't always concerned about how we feel. He's more concerned about the destination he has already projected on our lives. So, his plan for us is what he's concerned about and how we feel. It ain't going to always feel good, but the destination that he's leading us on, once we get there, it's going to be to our good. Look at your name and say, you got to trust the process. There's always three things that God is looking to do. Everything he does, do one of three things. One is he keeps us close to him. The second is he causes us to understand his will, plan, and purpose. And the third is he equips us to carry out his will, plan, and purpose. Israel's heart had drifted from God. So the, the, the exile was there to pull them back to him. See, we love Jeremiah 29, but Micah, keep on. Go to the next one, Micah. Go to verse 12. Then you will. Then you will call on me and pray to me, and I will what? Go to verse 13. 
You will what? Seek me and find me when you seek me with what? So we love God how knows the plan, but the plan is to cause you to constantly turn and depend on him. Look at your neighbor and say, it's all about keeping you with him. So if I got to turn some things upside down in your world because I see you drifting, or if I got to turn some things upside down in your world to get you to move forward in what I have called you to do, look at your neighbor and say, he will. My son said, we didn't know where we was going. We didn't. <laughs> My son said, we had to trust the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, we did. See? I knew God was saying move forward, but moving forward was scary to leave what was comfortable. He told Abraham, get up and leave what's what? Familiar. Leave your family. What were they? They were idol worshipers. Israel struggled with what? Idol worship. Abraham was led out to be a, a, a change and a, a, a liaison, an agent that God can use to reach the masses. He said, I will make you a father of what? Many nations. And he told him to obey my commands, follow my attributes, do what I tell you to do, follow how I lead, and I will make you a father of what? Many nations. But Abraham didn't know all the ebbs and flows that he was going to have to go through to become that father of many nations. When he got before the Pharaoh and he saw that hardship about to come on because Sarah was beautiful, what did he do? He stepped into his own he tried to do something in and of him, his own power. And God had to come in to protect his plan. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's about his plan. His plan for the world and his plan for you. Go back to the, the text real quick. And I, I want to slow down because I'm getting ahead of myself. Go back to... Verse 8 of Isaiah. And if you read this and you don't pay attention, and I, and I missed it too. It took some commentary to even get, let me catch something that I never caught before. He says, but you, Israel, my servant. Then he said, Jacob, whom I chose. You will miss that if you don't really look at why. He could have said, Israel, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. But he didn't say that. He said, Israel, my servant, Jacob, who I have what? What is Jacob? He changed Jacob's name for a reason. Jacob was a trickster. Jacob was untrustworthy. Jacob was conniving. Look at his brother Esau. Look at what he done to Esau. This was Israel. Israel always, heart was always turning away from God. But God said, I called you, Jacob. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget you a broken piece of mess. Don't forget you need me. Look at them and say, I need them. Claire Reese, you need them. So when he changes you, don't forget what you was. And in some cases, what you still are. But I haven't rejected you, but I may send you through some things to get you on the path that I have for you. So the question is, will you trust the process? If he takes some things from you, will you stay committed to him? If he takes you through some valleys that don't feel good, he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil for thou art. Will we believe that God is still with me when everything is fading away? Look at them and say, trust the, process. trust the process. So I'm talking to somebody. I don't know who I'm talking about in here. I know I was talking to myself. Because God was talking to two individuals in verse, in chapter 41. He's talking about non-believers. And he's talking about those, talking to those who claim to believe. 
And the question is, will you trust me to do what's best for you? I didn't see us at 13 North Sprig Street. I didn't see this being the route we was going to take. But when it happened, will you trust the process? I didn't see me uh, losing this job and, and, and being thrown in this position where I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But God knows. So will you look at them and say, trust the process. I'm tired of these people frustrating me at this place. I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of dealing with that. God, this ain't fair. Will you trust the process. Look at him and say, don't feel good all the time. But he said, all things work for the what? Of those who are what? Love the Lord and what? To whose purpose? To whose purpose? To whose purpose? No, my purpose. No, Joseph's purpose. Kalisha is your purpose. No, to whose purpose? So if it's his purpose, then when Joseph finds himself in the pit, if it's his person's purpose, when Joseph finds himself as a slave in Potiphar's house and lied upon and thrown into prison, if it's his purpose, when Joseph is left there for years waiting on God to save him out of his situation because God showed him his vision, but somehow he didn't understand the process. He didn't understand that the pit was a part of the plan. He didn't understand that Potiphar's wife lying on him was a part of the plan. Oh, my God, I know I'm in some stuff. He didn't understand that being in that prison stuck for a few years while he helped others and they go back and they forgot about him was a part of the plan. So when he got where God wanted him to be, he could understand it had to be God. And he can look and say what the enemy meant for what? God meant for what? Oh, look at your name and say trust the process. He taking you somewhere, Sparks. So when they lie on you, he said they lied on me first. <laughs> when they when they when they uh, 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 turn their back on you, take, he gonna say, but they turned their back on me too. And he said, if you love me, they're going to hate you because you what love me. He said the world hated me, so they will what. Mm -hmm. When you own God's timing and you moving in the way God has for you to move. Not everybody's going to understand the move and some people will reject you but you got to trust God that even in that rejection I'm going the way God has instructed and planned for me to go and that at the end of that road I'm going to get to the purpose for which he has for me and it's going to be better and I can look like Joseph and say all this was for good. Look at them and say trust the process. Someone here is in a trying place. Someone here is dealing with some stuff that's causing them to question everything around them. Israel was questioning, could they trust God? How can you say, uh, put that back up there real quick, Micah, uh, verse, yeah. But Israel, uh, my servant, Jacob, whom I love, uh, uh, I have chosen you, you descendant of Abraham, my friend. Go to verse uh, 10. So do not fear. How can I say this? So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am displaced. How can I say this when you just ripped me from my home? How can I say this when you took my job away from me, when you took my wife away from me, when you took my husband away from me, when you took my child away from me, when I'm sick and I don't know what's going to happen? How can you tell me do not fear for I am with you when you allow this to happen to me? Israel's like, how can I trust a God that allowed me to experience exile? They felt betrayed. They felt abandoned. But Sparks, it was his plan. And then he says, I will what? Strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The reason we are here 
it's because of what? What? You made a way. You said you made a way. So I am standing here only because you made a way. He closed doors and sparks, he opens doors. So if he closed the door, then Matt, we got to trust that this is the path he has placed us on. And I have to, like Abraham, trust him as he leads me. I have to trust him when I can't see where I'm going. I don't know what tomorrow may bring. I don't know what's going to happen the next moment, the next second, but I do know who knows. And as long as I stay with him, I'm good. Look at him and say, I'm good. So I can trust the process. Put your hands together in this house. Hey, man, give me a little soft music, Mike. <clears throat> I don't know who needed to hear this on today, but God said, I'm, I have you in my hands. Amen. So you can literally say, do not fear, for I am with you. Look at this. Say this with me. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I would uphold you with my, my righteous right hand. Do you believe that on today? Amen. Do you believe that God's process is the best way? I can say it is. I'm learning that not every turn is going to feel good to me. People have hurt me. People have said some things to me that even this week, <laughs> I don't tell y'all everything I deal with when I li leave here. I don't tell you the words that cut deep that you put a smile on, Joseph, but you got cut and it hurt. When people uh, 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 say things, and I don't even know if they even mean what they say. They're just trying to get under your skin. They're trying to discourage you. People have hurt you, and oftentimes it's the people that's close to you. <laughs> it's people that you walk with, that you call brother, that you call sister, can do the most hurt to you. Some stuff was said to me this week that hurt me. Only because I was trying to do what I thought was right. They hurt me with their words. Words do hurt. Look at that and say, words hurt. Amen. But God knew where I was. I thought I was fine. I was telling my wife, I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm good. I got to my job and I sat down and I knew that stuff hurt because I couldn't get it out of my heart and my mind. It hurt. And like I said, your grandmother said, trust the process. And I'm like, God, why do those that you call your servants <laughs> have to experience so much of this stuff? Why do the servant that's doing your work, that's trying to be faithful to you. No, I'm not perfect. I never claim perfection. I'm not. But I'm trying to do what you call me to do. Why do we get hurt? Why do we get distracted? Why do we get hit so much? And he said, because it's taking you to where I have you to go. See, when we get to where we need to go, we can be like Joseph. We can say, I know why you brought me this way. I can't see it right now. I don't understand why they said what they said. I don't understand why my brother sold me. I don't understand why they tried to take me out. All I did was share what you had told me, what you have shown me. I shared it, and in sharing the spark, sparks, they tried to take me out. But he didn't know that's how God was going to position him to get to where God had already predetermined him to be. Sometimes what hurts is where you're supposed to be. The pain, the frustration, that space is where you're supposed to be because it's going to pull something out of you that you didn't even know it was in you. Or it's going to cause you to pull on him in a way that you would not have had you not been in that situation. But at the end of it, you're going to be better. I bet Joseph cried in that prison. I bet Joseph wailed in that pit. Because his brothers was talking about killing him. And it took one just saying, no, we cannot do this act. That was God talking. You can put him in a pit, but you can't take his life. What did he tell Satan? You can touch him, but you can't take his life. 
So God is in control. I'm pretty sure Job was like, God, he said, even though you slay me, yet will I what? Trust you. There is a reason you have me here. I don't know why, but you have me here for a reason, and I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to go through this process. Because in the end, I'm going to be where you have me to be. Paul said, I learned to trust him on the mountaintop in the valley no, that I can do all things through what? Christ. Christ that what? Strengthens me. So I point to you and say, be encouraged on the day, servants. All those that put your trust in the hands of the Lord, know that whatever happens in your life, God is either allowing it or he has done it for your good. Amen. Look at that. Can you trust him on today? If you can trust him, put your hands together in this house. If he's a good God, put your hands together in this house. Because God is faithful. Amen. And, and, and when he's told them that, Israel couldn't live up to it, but he, he called someone else Israel. Amen. And that was Jesus. And he said, I come like my brothers. Amen. Jesus was that substitution. And if you keep reading on, he was the one who, who lived up to what God wanted, and then he extended it to us. God is a good God. He's a faithful God. And if you trust the process, he's going to get you to the place that you need to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Put your hands together one more time. I pray that that bless you on this morning. I'm a little heavy, a little tired. But I, that was for me as well as for you. God is in control. I'm going to call the deacons up. We're going to be up and standing. Is there anyone that needs special prayer today? Amen. That's going through some things. They may not want to share everything, but if you just put your hands up, we'll pray for you. Amen. I see you back there, Sister Ren. I mean, Sister Ann, Sister Kalisha. Who else? Summer. Lee. Brother Sparks, I see you. Amen. Anyone else? <clears throat> Sister Ren. Amen. I just ask y'all to trust the process. One of the reasons he may be pulling on you is to get closer to him. One of the reasons he may have disrupted your world is for the purpose that he has on your life. Mary wasn't looking to have.